Creationist Healing and Diabetes Overview. It says of Moses that his eyes were not dim or his natural force abated. He still had the strength and sight of when he was young, just before his death. Diabetes is that which would rob us of that force and vitality and sight and function. But it doesn't need to. God's word has been given that we might be able to overcome these problems and while we're living, God wants us to be an instrument for him to spread his word to others. So he wants healthy people. And so his word is given to make us healthy, holy. Holy means to be made clean and part of that cleanliness is the body. Diabetes is a growing epidemic of the Western culture and it's on its way to you because as the West influences by its food, how it's produced, the result is diabetes is a growing epidemic. From conventional medicine, they often say it's idiopathic, the disease is unclear what causes it. It is clear only that the overall picture is unclear. There is no answer to the chicken egg conundrum and it is most probably a combination of multiple and interacting effects. That is what it is. Which explains the sometimes conflicting, sometimes confusing and always tantalizing data cited. This conundrum applies to all diseases. Look up a MIMS manual and it'll go through the diseases and say idiopathic, idiopathic, meaning we don't know what causes it. So if they don't know what causes it, don't go to them for cure. Look for someone who knows about Christian principles and the role of minerals and mental health in healing. There are many who claim to serve God but who have no experimental knowledge of Jesus. This applies to the physical realm as well. Jesus was about the physical, healing, doing things for humanity physically. We need to be healers like he is, or he was. If we do not have an experimental knowledge of Jesus, then we do not know his ways, the nature of things, and how to heal, heal others, this experimental knowledge is not something of the world that is acknowledged or documented. Now that might sound like it's um, something in the airy fairy realm, but it's not. And you'll see that as we go along. Could the Bible hold the keys to reversing the disease to the many diseases? The answer is yes. It's just that man will not accept God's ways. They do not have the will or want to follow his God-given ideas, rules, word. Plant requires an environment and disease is usually not an isolated fact. Like a plant, it talks about the righteous being trees of righteousness. Trees of righteousness physically and spiritually. I want you to see and understand and remember this, that most diseases have multiple causes and is environmental. That is the environment we create. When we get back to God's ideal and creation, then we start to heal from these diseases. The tiny microbes that are unseen by the naked eye release nutrients into the soil to the plant, just as inside us microbes work to release nutrients from digested food for us. Microbes change themselves, morph themselves according to the environment in which they find themselves and do their appointed task as God has given them. Those that keep the body clean by good foods, by primarily using plant foods to the best of their ability, are called, as I said, Isaiah 61.3, trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. This is not make-believe, it's real.
the principles are given in his word. Diabetes mellitus, disorder of carbohydrate metabolism, characterized by impaired ability of the body to produce or respond to insulin, a body hormone, and thereby maintain proper levels of sugar in the blood. A hormone is a regulatory substance produced in an organism and transported in tissue fluid such as blood or sap to stimulate uh, the specific cells. Current trends in diabetes treatment, blood sugar level, cholesterol and blood pressure control, rightly so, medication or insulin, meals and snacks at two to three hour intervals, glycemic index for foods, exercise programs. Now in this people are not helping themselves even on these things that are being given that we know are good for your health. Now some of those would be appropriate and some not in the list given. But even to these people do not love themselves in looking after themselves and the gift of life God has given them so that they will not have brain disease, dementia, sexual dysfunction. These are the things that will be first hand with blood vessel problems such as diabetes. Okay, the tests are a guide. But you know, once it shows something, it's probably been in process for quite a while and the body's been let down. We don't want to reach that point. It's harder to get up the hill. And it's easy for a letter to go down the hill. So tests can give you a false sense of security, especially when you consider that the cause is not known because the world does not follow Bible principles, thereby not being able to link the facts together. That's just the way it is. Blood vessel damage from diabetes. Some of those are mentioned. Sexual dysfunction, heart disease, eyes, kidney, dementia, peripheral vascular disease, nerve damage in the limbs and elsewhere, and other things such as depression. Who wants to get any one of these? These are serious as you look at all of them. If, for example, you have sexual dysfunction as a diabetic you probably have three times more chance of heart disease and if it's in the heart it's going to be in the rest of the system it's a system problem we cut it up into little parts and it makes money for people and visually there you have it it's um, taking over the whole body but it works so little by little doesn't happen quickly but when a part such as sight failure can't see clearly happens for example it happens rapidly it reaches a point where the reserves are run out and then it starts to malfunction so something that comes on as a kidney problem foot problem leg whatever it is brain comes on suddenly is the result of a long time of abuse of the body that people are not aware of and some of it will be out of their control which we need to put back into their control diabetes more than doubles your risk of heart disease and stroke also is the leading cause of kidney failure non-injury related foot and leg amputations and new cases of blindness more than half of the people with diabetes have some form of nerve damage which can cause a loss of sensation in the feet and that might mean uh, blisters sores ulcers and amputation diabetic medication drives pancreas to work harder shouldn't be the case pancreas control is so important if you have a problem such as cancer pancreas control working functioning properly is vital in a situation like that so it's a foundation here because the pancreas is the root problem in diabetes diabetic medication drives the pancreas to work harder to produce more insulin when it is already in a diseased state so it's like a band-aid 
The action follows a study by French medical agency of 155,000 diabetic patients taking the drug over a four year period, Actos, which found a potential increase of 40% in bladder cancer. Actos had become an alternative to um, Avandia after studies linked the rival medication to heart problems. So you're taking this medication for diabetes to stop blood vessel disease and you end up with a heart problem from which you're trying to prevent. So some of the medications were not really making sense when they could have major complications on heart, kidneys, etc., which were documented and spoken about and were still being used past the warning time by specialists. Though the popular uh, glucose controlled drug is still sold in the United States, uh, two European countries, France, Germany, have banned sales of medication according to uh, CBS News. Now we've been told things from long ago, but important information is often ignored. New England Washington report said that when they examined people after taking a meal using x-ray, it took four to five, sorry, it took five to six hours in a good system to digest properly. And that should be the span time that we have between meals and those who were continually grazing, they found the breakfast was still in the stomach at the end of the day. So we'll talk about this a little bit more in greater detail as we go along. Now, the fundus at the top of the stomach, as you can see visually, is that compartment that the salivary amylase works for an hour on the food before it is released into the main body of the stomach. So times and laws are God given. In the natural world, in our bodies, in the spiritual realm. If therefore it takes five to six hours to digest a meal, nothing should be taken in between. This should be a period of cleaning and resting. And by cleaning the body out in this way, the blood can become pure. So by the purity of the blood, the body can heal parts. Do we really think that's real? Well, one fellow, for example, he shows me his foot and when he had um, problem with blood vessel he had gangrene as a result they let the gangrene take its course they weren't going to do surgery until the toe would drop off and when the blood came back to the limb back to the toes he regrew that part of the toe that fell off and the nail grew back into place Three sets of monkeys, meals are given the same except for the fats that are given to these sets of monkeys. And they compare butterfat, corn oil and peanut oil. And they found that with the, um, the best result with the cholesterol was with the peanut oil. Now after so many months, they compared the monkeys again. They got the cholesterol counts, but they looked inside their arteries and they found the results were like this. Corn oil, 60%, uh, 62% blockage, butter fat, 82% blockage, and peanut oil, 93% blockage. What does that tell us? The one that had the best results with the cholesterol, the one on the peanut oil had the greatest problem as far as a blockage in the arteries. Plant oils cause problems. It's an extract. 70 years of corn to get this little bit of oil. The body finds it hard to cope with this concentrate just like sugar is an extract. 
so this is also an extract the body has problems dealing with this there's red blood cell coagulation and oxygen in the body goes down and absorption decreases the result is something that you're not going to like commercially but it's something you've got to take into your own hands all animal fats and plant oils not found inside the vegetable but extracted will cause disease to the arteries it's pretty simple Seventh-day Adventist pioneer stated this all sources of fats oils and greases should be left out of preparation of food butter is less harmful when eaten on cold bread than when it is cooked but as a rule it is better to dispense with it altogether the China study now China being such a big population that they are able to study how in recent times they have moved from their original diet a plant based diet to everything that the West gives to us and the result is cancer and diabetes and the Western diseases now this is documented of course and you can buy the book it examines the relation between the consumption of animal products and a variety of chronic illnesses such as cancer of the breast, prostate and bowel, diabetes and coronary heart disease and basically the summary is that Western diet gives us those problems when we go to a plant basic plant diet when we simplify the diet the result is health and healing the study examined mortality rates from 48 forms of cancer and other chronic diseases from 73 to 75 in 65 uh, counties in China and correlated them with um, 83 to 84 dietary surveys and blood work from 6,500 people, 100 from each county. It concluded that counties with a high consumption of animal-based products in 83 to, sorry, 1983 to 84 were more likely to have higher death rates from Western diseases as of 73 to 75 while the opposite was true from counties that ate more plant foods in 83 to 84 so they as counties change to the western diet they're summarizing what the results were and naturally the results when they go to um, more western foods more animal based back away from the plant based diet the result is disease Here's a result that's typical and it's happened over and over again. It's not something new, it's been known. But um, here's one author describes a, a diet study conducted by James Anderson 50 patients, uh, 25 with type 1 and 25 type 2, were taking insulin to control blood glucose concentrations. And they switched from the American style diet recommended by the American Diabetes Association to a high fiber low fat plant based diet the patients with type 1 diabetes were able to reduce their insulin by an average of 40% within 3 weeks of changing their diet and 24 of the 25 patients with type 2 diabetes were able to stop taking their insulin altogether within weeks the same result will be seen for problems such as nerve damage people can have painful neuropathy and uh, there was Weimar showed that in 80% of patients in a small test group in 4 to 16 days 80% of those patients did not have painful neuropathy to deal with any longer in a very quick time a plant based diet will start to clean and stop those inflammatory factors in the body and the result will be a better health animal fat and blood this was a biblical rule that the Israelites were told not to engage in they were given health laws as a family you are far from being free from disease you have used the fat of animal which God in his word expressly forbids 
and the Christian world to a great extent have ignored through false teachings and false theology have ignored that which belongs to the physical realm and God forbids it shall be a perpetual statue for your generations throughout all your dwelling that ye eat neither fat nor blood Leviticus 3.17 moreover ye shall eat no manner of blood whether it be of fowl or of beast or in any of your dwellings whatsoever soul it be that eateth any matter of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. How many people are participating in the blood and the fat? They're not eating kosher meat, that's for sure. And um, they're asking God at the same time to heal them when they're ignoring what the word of God has given to them from nearly the beginning of time. Here it is again. It shall be a perpetual how long is that? Perpetual statute. For your generations throughout all your dwellings that ye eat neither fat nor blood. Leviticus 3.17 God has furnished man with abundant means for the gratification of an unperverted appetite. He has spread before him the products of the earth, the colors, the tastes, a bountiful, a variety of food that is palatable to the taste and nutritious to the system, of these our benevolent heavenly father says we may freely eat fruit grains and vegetables prepared in a simple way free from spice notice what it's saying free from spice simple and free from grease of all kinds then you're starting to get into the safe food realm here come the monkeys again and usually we would say that monkeys probably have a better diet than us. But getting back to this uh, experiment that was done by a Dr. Wessler. And recently there's been an attack on the ever popular peanut, which has been challenged, the result of what he said that peanut oil had the greatest damage to the arteries. Now what they did, they fed the, the three sets of monkeys with uh, cholesterol. They had to speed up the disease process to get the result. But um, there's been, it's an unpopular message. So last year it says KC Hayes of, um, what is it, Brandis University reported that peanut oil does not clog the arteries of another species of monkeys as long as the oil is fed as part of a diet that contains about as much cholesterol as most people eat. So the result there, I would say, was a non-result because it takes a while for cholesterol to build up. They had to speed up the process to get a result. So when there's money involved, people want to dispute that message and when it's something that God's word has said they want to ignore it but if you want health and life as surely as the, the word of God gives it to you you need to do what it says well thank you Cadwell Esselstein for making some things clear American surgeon has a friend who's going to die he's got two months to live and they say we can do something about this no fish, no dairy or eggs, no meat, no refined oil or fat, no plant oil, and stresses, no plant oil. So a good, basic, plant-based diet. And what we have is, this fellow has two months to live. He's going to die of heart disease. You can see it there. Two and a half years later, roughly, they take a picture of his arteries. He should have died long ago. And... What do you see? His arteries are repaired back to normal. The amazing ability in the body is not about the amazing inventions of men. It is the ability of the body to heal itself given the right input. And God's word helps us in defining what the right input should be. Not only does the Bible prohibit fat of animals, but scavenger animals, which it states are unfit to eat. Some of them would make good sense, such as snails, creeping things, 
um, a pig, what's it designed for? We have other things such as lobsters and oysters. And people wonder that why they've got a problem. They love to eat them because they're used to them. But the Bible has specified what is fit and unfit for food. Now we have here about milk. You say, come on. What, Bible prohibited milk? No. But we need to use our common sense. We live in a polluted age. And the Bible speaks of that age. I will destroy those that destroy the earth. And pollution is part of that. Milk is, and animal products are becoming contaminated. It's a sign of the times in which we live. And Lucifer will destroy people physically and spiritually. Milk can become contaminated. Remember how they're pumping hormones and uh, antibiotics into these animals and carry germs. It's not a sterilized product. It's a pasteurized product. This is thought to be the way that childhood diabetes can occur. Dairy is more a problem where mass production is being used in its processing. And it was found in American milk. Uh, Dr. Neil Nedley documented this, that leukemia virus was found in the milk. Now he re referenced that it's because again, it's not a sterilized product, so things come through the milk. So the milk production, of course, it's changed since, um, well, probably in the last 20 years, how the animals are being fed. They're being fed in such a way to push the production. And while pushing the production, and bringing animals to mature, maturity quickly to make money, of competition but the result is disease for both the animals and for ourselves people need to understand how to love themselves God loves us he gives us a free choice though God designed each person to be loved free and happy free from disease to function well enjoy what God has created for us some environmental factors for diabetes lack of certain minerals from the soil magnesium zinc chromium these things help you get insulin into the cell. And reports, studies that were given suggested that the person might not go to diabetes if they had these minerals. But that's not the key. It's a multiple factor as we looked at at the beginning. It's not just one thing. I mean, you're not going to absorb magnesium, zinc, chromium if you haven't been cleaning the body out. So the microbes are right to absorb things properly anyway. Lack of vitamin D from the sun, so supplements are being taken instead of getting it through the natural way. Put the right um, oils in your body or take, take it as in the olive or in the vegetable and then the sun will not be a problem. The sun reacting on the skin when there's the wrong oils in the system can result in disease, skin cancer, etc eating too many meals, resting the pancreas in stomach is part of the program, whereas people are told the opposite and the result is disease. Eating refined foods. I'm always amazed when a person selects the white bread instead of the whole, the whole meal, when they know, they should know, natural sense, it should tell them that you get the ones that is with the, the grains and everything with it. Drinking with the meals. Now remember the stomach in the top compartment of the stomach we have the fundus and salivary amylase is working on the carbohydrates for an hour. The body works off times and laws. Works there for an hour on the carbohydrate. But if we're having liquid meals or we're drinking with our meals, it washes away that salivary amylase. It should be a basic rule for diabetes. So clean the body out, water half an hour before the meal, one hour after the meal. That's what the body needs, a clean inside, just like we have a shower for the outside. People are hardly drinking. They're not drinking pure water. Look at the quality of the water, what type of water we're we having. 
if we're anxious, it's a hormonal system. Insulin is a hormone. If we have poor rest patterns, again, the hormone insulin will be affected. We need to have good sleeping patterns. They need to be, the best is nine o'clock to bed. The hours before midnight are most beneficial. Put our trust in God. We do all we can in our power and leave the rest to Him. Anxiety and uh, shift work perhaps and heavy workloads will not help us in this problem which is in the hormonal system. Again, insulin is a hormone. When we get back to God's plan for us as seen in the days of creation including the Sabbath and start to understand how the body functions, we become well again. Remember I spoke times and laws. God is in charge of times and laws. Man has his, they don't work. He has natural cycles and the body works off also natural cycles. God has his own cycles. When we work with those, the body will start to get well again. Diabetes can greatly improve in several weeks if God's environment of healing is given. Arteries can be restored back to normal. We saw it graphically. Um, Kettle Esselstein wasn't the first one to bring out this fact. This very same illustration was given by Dr. Zen Keim in uh, his research in following God's ways because he was a Christian physician and he implemented these ideas. No plant oils were included. He had a physician friend. It was a plant-based diet and he had a couple of months to live, his doctor friend, and he was restored back to normal. He didn't die of the disease. The Bible says in Levit Leviticus, the life of the flesh is in the blood. We restore that life by improving blood quality and restoring the arteries. New Start is an old acronym for spiritual and physical healing. N for nutrition, the right fuel needed to heal the body. Exercise. Go out there and enjoy it. Lounge lizards. Do you think we'll be lounge lizards in heaven? We need to enjoy the great outdoors and be part of it. Water. Need to clean the body out, make it clean. How much we're what? Start off 70% water. We need to refresh the water. Make sure we've got the right quality water also. Sunshine, vitamin D. That can be spoken of later at length, what its role is and everything, but exercise outdoor, as long as you've got the right, the right oils and fats, it's, it's going to be beneficial for your health. Temperance, simplify, simplify is the key. Limit your combinations, limit the number of meals, good quality when you take them, and the result will be for health and healing. Air, good quality air. Not only that, how we breathe, and what we're breathing in, there's certain properties that can give us healing from the air. Rest patterns. Rest patterns are important for healing. And trust in God. Trust in what God's Word has said. Now here we're giving the very basics. We'll go into more detail as we're able to get programs up and out. But for now, you'll have to take some of these things by faith. But I know it'll make common sense to a lot of people anyway. But when we simplify the diet, when we trust in God, when we have a lifestyle that's in accordance with his plan, the original intent that was given in Eden, the result is health and healing.